Previously on Sailing Zingaro Kimi and I decided to sail from mainland Ecuador to one of the most remote places on Earth, Rapa Nui. You may know it as Easter Island. Underway, we lost our autopilot and had to steer with bungees for most of the 2,500 nautical miles, but we made it here safely. Rapa Nui is a demanding place to be, with deep anchorages and little protection from the volatile weather. Every couple of days we have to change the side of the island we're anchored on, and often the harbor is closed so we can't leave Zingaro. But even though we have barely seen anything of this island yet, something tells me it's going to be worth the trouble. We might have a boat kitty. This little guy won't leave us alone. Hey. Hey. No, Aww. that's my coffee. You can't have that. It's so cute. You're a cute little girl. Yeah. You're a cute one. So you want to tell us a little about what we actually came here for? Oh, you mean the moai? Yeah. <laughs> I would sit with a dog or a cat all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we finally uh, made it to the Moai after a week here. We didn't see any because, well, just a couple that were down in the Hangaroa, the town. But um, it's, a little it's a little difficult to get around here. Uh, you have to wait to get in and go to the right spot, and we don't have a car. So finally the wind switched and we changed anchorages, and now we're... We're in front of some really cool moai. So this is Anakena. It's the very northern anchorage in the island. And you can only come here when the wind is coming from the south, so it protects you. Uh, it looks like it's starting to shift, so this will probably be our last day. But we got really lucky and got to spend a whole weekend here. There's a beach behind the moai that's really pretty and it's pink sand. This place is special. And in the water, oh my god, all coral everywhere. You can see the difference in color, that's sand. Everything else is coral. There's their heads, right? There's their hats. Looks like it. Maybe but the their rest heads. of the statue, probably, because there's obviously some chunks missing here. This place is so cool. I can't believe we're here and we sailed here. <laughs> That's awesome. What a cool adventure. Back home already? I want to get in the water. And unfortunately, we have some work to do.
are you doing? Editing. And I'm tired. We swam all day. And we had another boatload of people over last night and drank some wine, so I'm relaxing. So the good thing about being a travel vlogger is you can work in anywhere you want in beautiful places. But the bad part about it is you can work anywhere you want in beautiful places. We're in like our favorite place we've ever been and we're editing. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of a double-edged sword, isn't it? Yeah, it's very nice that we get to experience these places though. I can't wait to take Rick here. Uh-oh. Uh, Pasta. Action on the other side of Zingara. I it's think it's the boat Look who's here. Hey. Buddy Rick. Loving it. How was the trip, man? Sucked. <laughs> Worst trip I've ever had in my life. So the 28, 28 hours. So the autopilot looked looked kind of like a gun, and they stopped him every single place, and he had to pick up his bag in Chile and Mexico, right? And Mexico, yeah. Oh my god, that must have been horrible. And every no single fun. time, it, they were like, hey, what is this? We need to check this out. Yep. Oh and then I god. almost missed the last flight because I had to go through customers again, and they, they stopped me again. And I'm like, no, come on, stop, enough. Dude, thank you so much for bringing that down. Come here. You have got autopilot. Oh my god, yes! and tool and parts and sanders and everything else you wanted. All right, so we got Rick back to the boat, but it's really rocky. The wind shifted to more to the north and we're getting a lot of wind swell, big waves. Rick's getting sick and we're gonna move over to the other side. So we're just getting the dinghy up on board right now and the boat squared away, we're gonna move. Are going to change anchorages once again today we're gonna go to Tungariki and there's 15 moais right on shore it's supposed to be one of the most magical places on this island so I can't wait to see that from the boat so far so good Easter Island for the win Thanks for driving, buddy. Anytime. You having fun? Oh yeah. What do you think about this spot? I cannot wait to get off the boat and go check all this stuff out. This is awesome. that the point of land and uh, we're, we're just now in sand so we're away from all the coral.
put more more road out because we're anchored in about 40 feet of water and we have 140 feet of chain out so um, it's like three and a half to one I don't like I don't like that it has to be at least five but Aren't you happy with that? Yeah. What are you doing with that fender? I'm gonna tie it up to this so we can keep this thing off the coral. A super knot. All right, we got the dinghy in the water. What do you think? It looks well sick set. here. The golden light of the sun. Our patron Rick came down and uh, delivered the linear arm for the autopilot so we can replace it and actually move on with our passage over the Pacific to explore French Polynesia and stuff. So, the guys are, um, are right now figuring out how to install that bastard because it's way bigger. Um, it's, it's really big. I don't know, like. Two, two feet, maybe two and a half, and um, there is not really a spot to put it right now, it seems. They've been taking the cockpit apart all morning. I don't even, I'm not gonna, um, there's enough people on this job, you know, in German we say, what do we say? Multiple cooks make the soup too salty. <laughs> Mehrere Koche versetzen die Suppe, something like that. I, I'm starting to lose my German, so I'm not really sure. So that has been taking quite a lot of the morning, the installation of the autopilot. And it is going to take a lot more mornings and evenings, I'm sure. Not three, because there, then, then it doesn't have enough travel. Yeah, it only has, it only has enough travel for, for like an extra two inches on either side. So it's 28 inches long. So where is that supposed to go? We don't know yet. Uh, it doesn't fit anywhere, honestly. I don't know what to do, man. So what have you guys been coming up with? We got the Primo, Primo Demo. We're gonna add another um, quadrant. Instead of trying to use this quadrant oh, no because- no way. Yeah. Because this quadrant, one, it's made out of plywood and glass, and it's not very strong. Two, we'd have to make a bracket for it. Three, it doesn't have enough enough um, clearance forward to attach the arm at all. So we'd have to attach it on the back where all the cablings are. That means we have to make a standoff bracket. It would just be horrible. So we've decided. And number five is that we would have had to cut the boat open. Yeah, and we there was no way no possible way to do this without cutting the boat open and adding some wood and like making it look super ghetto. So luckily with this boat the quadrant is attached not to just cables but a tube. So I have a two and a half inch aluminum tube that goes out and then that controls my steering. So we're just gonna clamp another um, quadrant onto it and we're just talking about how to make it the strongest we can possibly make it. So we're, we're gonna end up having a big, two big pieces clamped on with two bolts going through it in opposing directions and then a kind of like an eye that, that, that goes down and the thing um, connects onto that. And it'll, it'll have the same range of motion as the other quadrant, but it'll be, I think this one's gonna be pretty strong. It'll be stronger than that one because it's gonna be all aluminum, made of quarter inch and half inch plate aluminum. 
The thing is, we're in Easter Island. There's only one guy here that'll that'll weld aluminum. So when I take him this thing, it's all made out of plates. So you can none of it's machined. That was part of the problem too, is we couldn't just take it to a machine shop and have a machine shop make it. There is no machine shop here. So we've engineered a way to make it out of plate. And I have plate, but I, I need a little bit wider for a couple pieces. So hopefully he's got some aluminum pieces, but we just engineered the shit out of this thing. I'm super happy. Rick, <laughs> you're the man. Seriously, because we, we used what we have on board in, a, in an island without a machine shop and engineered something that's gonna be stupid strong. Super happy. Super happy. I was really frustrated trying to fit this thing. I mean, we had it in there like upside down and in here and in there and we had everything ripped apart and I'm thinking we're gonna have to cut the counter off and and now this way we just put it in there. It's super simple to set up and it's really easy. It's a straight drive and it's really strong. So that's good. And just did I did I mention it was strong? <laughs> and bolted to the floor. I'm super happy, man. That's really awesome. Thank you for that. I'm glad I'm super glad you came down because you, you engineered the shit out of this thing. <laughs> Good job, people. Otravita, 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 Martin. <gasps> Martin's back with Patty. Oh, Let's see whether we're going to have a party.